Hi guys, this is Unit 4, called Glow in the Dark. In this unit, we'll introduce the chemistry needed to understand how glowing things work. In section 4.1, we'll talk about the atom. We'll learn how to count particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. And we'll discuss where the protons, neutrons, and electrons are located. We'll then focus our studies in section 4.2 into the nucleus. And we'll talk about nuclear decay reactions, fission, fusion, and half-life problems. And then we'll do section 4.3, which is electronic structure. We will actually configure the address of an electron. We'll finish up the unit talking about the periodic table, its organization, patterns and trends we can detect from the periodic table, and how the electron transitions within an atom cause light to form. Let's start this unit by defining an atom. An atom is the basic building block of matter. It is defined as the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of that element. So if we had an example, say, of the aluminum atom, if we were to keep on dividing it and dividing it into smaller and smaller pieces, we would only ever get smaller parts called atoms of the element aluminum. Now we can divide the atom into subatomic particles. We'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. There are three subatomic particles within the atom, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. The proton is found in the nucleus, as well as the neutron. They both have relatively the same mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. However, they have different charges. The proton takes on the charge of positive 1, and the neutron is neutral, meaning it has no charge. The third particle is the electron, and that is located outside of the nucleus. You could say it's found in the electron cloud. Its mass is about 2,000 times smaller than the mass of the proton and the neutron at 9.10 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. It has a charge of negative 1. When talking about the atom, we have to be thinking on the nano level. And of course, you can see with these masses that they are extremely small. So to make them more relative to us, we use relative mass to discuss the mass of the proton, the neutron, and the electron. We're going to equate 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms as one atomic mass unit. That will allow us then to talk about the proton and the neutron as 1 AMU in mass and the electron as 0 0.00055 AMUs. Now the nucleus is a very small region in the center of the atom. It is extremely dense, meaning that the protons and the neutrons are extremely crowded within that smaller area. The electron cloud is the region that surrounds the nucleus, and it is basically empty space. You will find the electrons scattered throughout, but they are few and far between. A good analogy to use to understand the size of the nucleus compared to the electron cloud would be to drop a straight pin in the center of the Houston Astrodome. The top head of the straight pin would represent the nucleus, and everything around it would be the empty space of the electron cloud within that Houston Astrodome. One of the things that you'll have to do in this unit is learn how to count subatomic particles. Let's start off by talking about the mass number. It is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of a specific atom. There are two ways that you can calculate this number. The first way would be that you are given protons and neutrons of an atom and you add them together to get the mass number. The other way would be to, when not given that information, use the periodic table. You will find the element's average atomic mass, which is a decimal number, and then you will round it to a whole number, as seen in the example below. Nitrogen's average atomic mass is 14.01 AMUs. Find it on your reference sheet so that you can verify that number. We're just going to round it to a whole number, and we get a mass number of 14. Another important number is called the atomic number and that tells you how many protons are in the nucleus of an atom. Every element in this world has a different number of protons. So the atomic number is a way to identify an unknown atom. If we were to find nitrogen again on the periodic table, you will notice that it has an atomic number of seven. It is the whole number in the block. Once you know the mass number and the atomic number, all you have to do is subtract them from each other to get the number of neutrons. Remember that the mass number represents the protons and the neutrons within the nucleus. The atomic number just represents the protons. So by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number, 
you will get the number of neutrons in the atom. Many atoms of an element are neutral, meaning that they have no charge. That means that the positively charged proton must be the same number as the negatively charged electron. However, we do have ions as well. An ion is a atom with a charge because it has a different number of protons compared to electrons. It can be positively charged or negatively charged. So to calculate the number of electrons, we're going to use the formula that's in the box below. Overall charge equals protons minus electrons. If we find out that the protons minus the electrons gives us zero, that means we have a neutral atom. However, if we find that it gives us a positive or a negative charge, we'll know we're looking at an ion. So let's try an example. How many electrons does the bromide ion have? First thing we're going to find is the charge of the bromide ion, which is minus 1. And we'll plug it into the equation seen above. Minus 1 is equal to the number of protons. We'll go to your periodic table to see that the atomic number is 35, which is the number of protons for bromine, minus E. So basically we're just going to move the 35 over to the other side, and that will give us an answer of electrons to be 36. Now you try. How many electrons does the aluminum ion have? Turn the vodcast off, do the problem, and come back on to find the answer. So you can see it has a charge of plus 3. And that's equal to the number of protons. As we go to the periodic table, find the atomic number for aluminum, which is 13. That's how many protons it has, minus the electrons, which is E. We're going to bring the negative 13 over to the other side, and that will end up giving us 10 as the number of electrons. One of the ways that we can display information about elements is through the use of a nuclear symbol. The nuclear symbol will have the element symbol, and in the upper left corner, which is the superscript, you will place the mass number. In the lower left corner, as the subscript, you will place the atomic number. And if there is a charge of an ion, you will place that in the upper right-hand corner as another superscript. Let's take a look at an example. This is the oxide ion. You can see that it has a mass number of 16. Remember, that's the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus an atomic number of 8, which is the number of protons, and it has a charge of negative 2. If you were to calculate how many protons, electrons, and neutrons in this atom, you know that there will be 8 protons because of the atomic number. If we subtract the mass number minus the atomic number, that would give us 8 neutrons. And if we do our formula, negative 2 is equal to 8 minus E, we will find out there are 10 electrons in this ion. Take a few seconds to look over these three example problems and determine the protons, neutrons, and electrons in each one. Notice the first one is the fluoride ion. It is an ion, a negatively charged anion. And then you have two neutral atoms following. Go ahead and find your answers. Turn off the podcast. When you're ready to come back on, you'll see the answers. Okay, let's start off with the first one. We know in the fluoride ion that there's an atomic number of 9, so that's 9 protons. If we subtract the mass number from the atomic number, we will get 10 neutrons. And since this is an ion, it has a charge of minus 1. There are 9 protons minus E. When we solve for E, we end up getting 10 electrons. In the next example, we have iron. It has an atomic number of 26, so that's 26 protons. There is no charge, which means that there are 26 electrons as well. And then we're going to subtract 57 minus 26 to get the answer of 31 neutrons. Lastly, mercury has an atomic number of 80, so that's 80 protons. Once again, there is no charge, which means we have 80 electrons. And 204 minus 80 is 124 neutrons. Another way to display information about an atom is to use hyphen notation. We take the element name, we put a hyphen behind it, and then the mass number of that particular atom would go on the end. You will learn in the next section that atoms can have isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons, which means that the mass number can change. 
So if we go back to that slide where we talked about mass number, the sum of the protons and the neutrons, I just need you to be aware that sometimes the mass number on the periodic table is not going to be the correct mass number of the particular atom that we're looking at. So whenever you are given a chart, you want to make sure that if the number of protons and the neutrons are given to you, that you add those up to get the mass number instead of going directly to the periodic table. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We know that we have magnesium 25 in the first row. So we know that we'll have a symbol of mg. This is the mass number, so we're going to put that up in the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to go to the periodic table to determine that its atomic number is 12. You can always go to the table to find the atomic number. So I'm going to put a 12 here and a 25 here. I know that I have 12 protons because the atomic number tells me how many protons. I know that if I subtract 12 from 25, that will give me 13 neutrons. And because there's a plus 2 charge, and we know that the proton number is 12, and we're trying to find the number of electrons, we're going to find out that it becomes 10 when we plug it into our equation. Don't forget to put the charge of plus 2 in the nuclear symbol. In the second row, we have a second example, and you can see that the atomic number is 82. That will tell me I have 82 protons. When my protons and my electrons are equal to each other, that means there is a neutral atom of no charge. The number of protons and the neutrons are now going to be added together. That will give us a mass number of 208. So now we have to determine who number 82 is. That is going to be lead. So we're going to write out LEAD hyphen 208. And we will then take the symbol of lead, which is PB. We'll put 208 on the top and the atomic number of 82 on the bottom. Remember, there will be no charge in the upper right-hand corner because it is a neutral atom. Stay tuned for the next section where we'll actually talk about what isotopes are and how to calculate the average atomic mass number that you've used to convert to mass number.